heard from somebody who was on staff over at Alice that they liked writing partnerships because you get two for the price of one. And that's, you know, and I think it's great for us because we're married. And if you get a job on the show and you're married and your partner isn't there. Yeah, people always say, how could you possibly be married and work together? And we sort of feel like, well, how could you be a writer on a TV show and produce TV shows without your partner because you never You'd would never see, them. see them? And a lot of people we worked with, that's what they liked about it, is that they never <laughs> saw their spouse. But, you know, you literally, you, you work, if you're awake, you're working. So we had the advantage of, you know, the drive-in and, you know, if we ever got home before 2 in the morning, you could talk about the show. And we always were kind of prepared. Certainly in the beginning, we worked 24-7 just all the time and we I mean if you ever had a weekend off we the first staff job we had was on who's the boss and we just would get up you know if we ever had the weekend we would say okay well what stories do you think we should do and we always came in Monday morning and we would go to the producers and say you know we were thinking about the show and how about this 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 and this so it's kind of was it was good uh, for our it, career. it was it was great Yes, you always want to create your own TV show. That's that's where the big, I mean, that's that's the holy grail. If you're a TV writer, is that you create your own show. Um, well, you know, when I was I, I don't know if I should say this or not, but who cares? When I was applying for grad to grad school, there were a couple of schools that were kind of prestigious places to go to get an MFA. Um, one of them, whose I guess name I won't mention, Carnegie Mellon. Um, <laughs> I was accepted, and I thought that was really awesome because I think they took two MFA candidates. Now, my interview with them, they said, what would you like to do with your writing? To which I responded, I would like to move to L.A. and write and, and create and produce TV shows. And they said, Mr. Cernan, I did not ask you what you will do if you fail in New York. I asked you what you would like to do. So I decided maybe this wasn't the school for me. But yes, that's what I wanted to do. So um, when we were on staff, on our one of our first <sighs> staff jobs, our agent said, I'm setting you up for a meeting with, and I don't even remember who it was, but it was another company to, they're looking for somebody to do a pilot for someone. And so we went in and pitched, you know, our take on it. They took us to the network and the network um, said that they weren't going to buy that. They weren't, you know, eager to move forward with that project, but that please know that that door was open for us to come back and pitch pilots, that they didn't want to lose us to another network. So I think that was excellent positioning on his part to get us in there when we were like, but we have a job, let's not even, let's not rock the boat. But um, so then as Who's the Boss became successful and we, it was a very small staff, so we got a lot of um, recognition for our contribution to Who's the Boss. So then ABC asked us to come in and pitch pilots, which we did and we sold one. And so from that point on, we, we just did our own shows. And by the way, just a footnote to that is that Judith Light is not only one of the most talented, but is one of the nicest human beings on the planet. And when all of you actors watching this become big stars, be like her. <laughs> we had this idea, I don't know why. So they said to us, come in and think, pitch us something that you really want to write. Whether that was our agent's advice or the network's advice. And for some reason, we decided we wanted to write a medieval comedy. Yeah, we, right I'm sure we pitched several, but the one that I remember that we pitched was a medieval comedy, like it Cheers, Cheers in, in the castle. castle. It took place in the bar, in the common room of a castle. With the knights and the princess and probably and a wizard, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Stu Bloomberg, who was head of development for ABC at the time, said, I didn't realize you were bent. What I would love you to do is come in with well, something. Well, he said, I don't want to do a period piece, but I like the idea of that. What if something like that took place in modern times? And we came up with a so, show called The Charmings, which was a, a show about Snow White and Prince Charming and one of the seven dwarfs and the, the talking mirror and the wicked stepmother and their kids waking up from the evil spell at the end of Snow White and finding themselves in the valley. Interestingly, we kind of had decided we were going to get out of the television business because another show that we had that had great ratings got canceled and we just thought, I can't stand this anymore. So we decided we've always wanted to live in Santa Barbara and we thought, well, we'll buy a house in Santa Barbara, sell our house in L.A. and kind of start writing movies or we'll see what we want to do, whatever. 
Um, but we made the mistake of buying the house in Santa Barbara first, and then the LA riots hit, and our broker said, there's no chance you're selling this house in Hollywood for five years. So we thought, well, now what are we going to do? And we called our agent and said, you know, we need to go in and pitch a pilot. And we actually had a discussion about, you know, pilots, most pilots don't go, or maybe we'll do 13 episodes, we'll just make enough money to kind of, you know, cover this house until we can sell the other house. And we had worked with Fran on Who's the Boss um, in an episode that she played decorator. And mm -hmm. um, we thought she was hilarious. So we were pitching shows to Tim Flack, who was at the time was head of development at CBS and a great guy. He said, oh my goodness, Fran was just here pitching a show where she's a nanny. Yeah, we Would pitched you a work show for Fran. Her? I don't think I said that part. Oh, you left that out. Yeah. Sorry. We pitched a show. We pitched a show <laughs> and said, if you know who Fran Drescher is, we think she'd be hilarious in this. And Tim said that Fran was in there pitching a show where she was a nanny. Would we develop it with her and her husband? And that's that's what we did. And then they called them and said, would you work with these people, uh, Rob and Prue? And uh, Fran and Peter are like TV junkies. So they said, oh my God, we this, this was Fran, obviously. We know, we know everything they've written. So we had a great time. We all got together and we wrote the pilot. Um, at the Ellen Conta Hotel in Santa Barbara. And then it just turned out to sort of be, you know, the big hit. Sort of ironically, I guess.